Okay, well, today we're going to talk about um, food trends. And uh, we're going to concentrate, I guess I just go to the right here. Okay, on a couple of areas. First of all, with many of you coming out of school, you're going to see a very different marketplace out there. And we want to talk about what's that going to look like. There's a dramatic shift in people cooking at home. As a matter of fact, home cooking is now the high, at the highest level it's been in 25 years. And that opens enormous opportunities for basic commodity groups like people making flour, home baking is going up, flavored baking basics maybe like butter. Why don't we put lemon flavor in butter or dill or some of these interesting things. We're going to talk a lot about state, regional, and local. Those of you who work in the restaurant business know, wow, it's all about Americana. It will undoubtedly be the strongest trend for the next 10 years in terms of the culinary world. Chefs are rediscovering or discovering for the first time American cuisines like a Copper River salmon or whatever, or a Sonoma duck or what the 2,500 species of green be species, varieties of green beans that are grown in the United States. It's a really hot area. And then, of course, health is the fastest growing area of the food industry. And what can we expect there? So that's our game plan. Now, what I was going to say also when we started, there's a number of new reports that came out, particularly for the professors and students here, about the need for food scientists and technologists, agri-scientists, animal husbandry, animal scientists in the next couple of years. The, the, the point is that of every student that graduates, we are about going to be about 40% shy of the jobs that are going to be available in the next 15 years. And I'm going to send uh, to you, OK. Um, we'll send here the report, and we'll make sure they get disseminated. But I'll just give you some encouragement. The mean starting salary with a bachelor's in, in um, food science and technology right now is $78,000. A master's degree is eighty-seven, dollars and a PhD is ninety-six. dollars which means if that's the mean, a heck of a lot of people are way over that. So that's a big opportunity. So uh, it will detail what types of jobs there are, where they are, and what that's all about. And that's why I put the dollars in the haystack, which is what I forgot to tell you about. OK, let's look ahead and let's look at a few. There's three or four really basic things that are changing in the food market in the next couple of years. And let's just put our arms around those to start. Number one, who are we going to be selling our products to? Now, there's a number of major changes in the United States population that we have to keep in mind. And then I'm going to tell you why. Number one. Okay, we have about 300 million people in the United States. One third of the entire population of the United States is over 55 years of age. It's huge. So they are a force to be reckoned with. And what I want to show you on the next couple of slides, the types of foods they like, the way they eat, etc., is very different than many of the younger people in this room. That is a dramatic change. You can see right here on the bottom, those are ages on the left. The two groups that are going to grow, there's 80, you know, are the boomers and the older people, and that's going to be the huge uh, future. Now, though the kids of the boomers, commonly called echo boomers or millennials or whatever, they're between the ages, many of you are in that group, 15 to age 33. They're called Gen Y. They're the other huge groups. And they are 100% different what they want in terms of food than their parents. And so we have to look at that. So in the future, it's going to be shifting to their desires. The other thing that's going on right now is we have the biggest baby boom we've ever had in the history of the United States. There are more babies born this year and last year in the year before than ever before, than bigger than World War II. So for the next five years, you see on the top right there, I think this is my pointer, it's all about kids under age five, and then five years from now, it's going to be all about kids six to 12. Okay, now what those kids need is very different than what they ha have right now. They have heart problems, they have high cholesterol, it is absolutely depressing, and I will depress you on one slide later on. And the last one is we have look at the teens. McDonald's is a big client of ours, we did the international nutrition strategy for McDonald's. Here go the teens, bye bye because their parents right here are a very small group. So the number of teens in the United States is like for the next seven, eight, ten years is disappearing. So you don't want to be making energy beverages and all of a sudden your market's gone and there aren't many teens to sell them to. 
So there's going to be a big change. And lastly, we all know about the growth in the Hispanic population. Four to one compared to the normal amount of births are Hispanic. So this is what the market is going to look like. And we need to keep that in mind. Now, there's a, looks like a lot of data here, but let me walk you through it, because I always believe you have to have something to support what you're going to say. There's about $50,000 worth of data in this presentation, so I hope you can share it and put it to good use. Now, why do we care about the fact that 100 million people are over age 55? Well, because for the first time in the history of the food industry, the way people eat, age 50 plus, and the types of foods they like, is different than if you're in that younger group of the you know, 15 to age 33, or what many of you are in, called the Gen Yers. And the other thing is they, they eat differently. So two things. Number one is this old group here is the last generation to be raised on basic European cooking. So when they look for a flavor, they look for something that's very traditional. They are not the number one, in, they don't have the number one interest in ethnic, they don't have, they're not the most adventuresome, they love Americana, that's why this culinary movement is going to be so strong, and they were raised on Julia Child, who actually happened to be the food editor when I was at McCall's. So, that's interesting. Here's the other reason that it's going to be the most important is they're driving the restaurant business for the first time in history. If you look at your grandparents, as they got older, they stopped going to restaurants. Probably they couldn't afford it or they cooked more at home. Well, it's changed. Here come the boomers. They're the richest group in the population. They're spoiled rotten. They, they, want, they grew up on convenience foods and they want to go out and eat. And check this out. The young people have always driven the restaurant business. McDonald's, people like that. And they have, of course, they're going to be huge businesses. But if you look what's happening here, over the last five years, the number of people, 18 to 24, if you go back a couple years, it's going to look like this. The next age, 25 to 34, it'll look like this. If you go a little bit behind the recession, these groups look like this. And so what's happened is they're going to drive the restaurant business, and the restaurant business sets the trends. So what's that going to mean? Does that mean things like their favorites? I mean, whoever eats duck anymore? Come on. Veal, pork, ribs, lamb, all of these things, they are the favorites of this age group. Potatoes. Wait until you see the potato thing coming back again. All these things, they are the number one consumers of desserts. Everybody thinks it's families with kids. It's not. It's older people. It's empty nesters on older. Here's how they eat. They eat differently. Look, they eat an entree. Many of you eat, right, stir fries, pizza, casseroles, things all mixed together. Not this older group. They eat a meat dish, good for you meat people, poultry, fish, entree. Look at the difference by ages. It's almost a quarter more on a daily basis. So we're going to see the need for individual, like, pre-marinated uh, things to be more convenient in the fresh meat counter. All these things are going to go through the roof. Um, and the other thing is this gang, this older group, was raised on the basic four, uh, and they want to eat healthier. So to them, they want all this stuff. They want the bread on the side. They want the salad. They, if you go to a restaurant these days with this age group, and they don't get all the, the components, you're not giving them a full meal, and they don't like that. That's a value deal. So it's going to be a different world. And let's look at the younger group. Everybody thinks that the older folks are the gourmets. Wrong. Uh-uh. It's, it's all of you people in this room. It's the younger group. And here's some neat data that's collected by age across the top. It's collected by a group called Experian. It used to be Simmons. And who wants to eat? 100 is average. So all these guys are below average. Here's the younger groups. That's why Subway has all the neat sauces on their sandwiches, because that's what you want. You want something different. You want to try new foods. Look at trying new drinks by age. It's off the charts. Here's foodies. Foodie cooks. Foodies overall. Everybody thinks they're over here. They're not. They're here. So if you're going to start to work with this group in the future, and they're almost as big as the older group, what's it all about? Ethnic flavors, fun things, sauces, something that's very, very different. Here's, a, here's something that's really interesting. The number one shopper in a gourmet store, a gourmet food aisle, a specialty food store, is guess who? The young folks. 
right? If you're gourmet, that's where you're going to go, looking for something different. And everybody thinks it's over here. Here's another interesting. The flavor profiles of our age groups are very different. Look at 18 to 24. Spice profile goes off the charts. And it's interesting now, you're going to see a lot of this done also by the racial groups. And if you go down here, look at Asians. They prefer really hot, hot and spicy, as we all know, much more so than the general public. Same thing with African Americans here. It's not an accident that the Chipotle burger is in McDonald's because it draws a core audience that likes super spicy foods, and a lot of that is drawn by, by racial group, which is a, is a big part of their audience. So you can see it's become a science how to direct your foods now by age in product development. And these younger parents, you remember most of the babies are born to people in their 20s and early 30s, which is that Gen Y group up there, they've created our first baby foodies. You know, I went out to, to took my grandkids out the other day and they want calamari and all this stuff and I'm like, geez, whatever happened to a hot dog? But, I mean, you could see how different these kids are eating. Here's foods eaten by the family with households with kids. Mexican, 76%. Of a, probably tacos, probably a taco kit, have uh, a Mexican dinner during the week, an Asian dinner, tears Tex-Mex. So you see, we've never had this before. So the whole flavor profile of the people we are going to be making food products for, the types of food they're interested in, is going to change. And it's very interesting. Look what kids are getting in schools. This is the USDA school. For the, for the nation, look at this, 66% uh, are getting Asian things, meals during the week. Here's, look at this, Spanic capillas and kebabs. I would never give a kebab, a kid a kebab, a, a weapon called a kebab, but that's another thing, right? <laughs> Can you see the food fights now? Whoa, Nelly. Okay. And lastly, the other big change before we go on to cooking, the other really big change in this population is many, many of you young people have discovered health and nutrition. And that is new, and that is going to change the way the industry does business. Uh, for example, look at these numbers. This is brand new 2010 data. Here's your young people, your millennials, 18 to 33. If you add that up, what's 26? And then you go here and look at the older group. You know, you got a good big core of kids going to restaurants looking for something lighter uh, and more healthy. That's restaurants. Look at functional foods. Everybody thinks the older group are the biggest users of functional foods. It absolutely goes down with age because they eat by the basic four. They don't think they need some of these newfangled things. But energy drinks, bars, all those functional things, eight out of ten. 18 to 24 year olds are using them. So that is going to change. For example, in the world of convenience foods, if you're going to make a kit for dinner, I have fight with General Mills all the time, hamburger helper, it's got to be healthier. You don't be want to raising your kids on sodium level that's that high. I don't care if it's selling. Doesn't that tell you that that's going to have to change over the next couple of years? Sure it is. Okay, I'm off my high horse.